Sound the alarm, it's high time. In the morning, so I pray, then we make them know, so we still there. Now open up me eyes, we see me enemies, the real me know, so them are some betrayers. Spiritual eyes, six, seven cents, yeah, yeah, no, so no, for them no real. No, for them no real, betrayers, so I'm the closest ones to your heart, I say, feel. Hey, Shalom listening audience, this is Israel United in Christ, and this is the Writings on the Wall radio show. <laughs> to my right, Officer Obadiah, Officer Hezekiah, Officer Elijah, and I'm Officer Losides. All right, we are back with another show, all praise to the Father. It's been a busy week, right, brothers? Right, That's right, right. Crazy week. A lot of things going on. All right, let's go ahead. Let's uh, see if we can go ahead and get started with the first article. See what's going on this week. This Don't forget, week. this is your place for end time news. That's right. right. That's, that's right. That's, that's what we're talking about, officer. That's the plug. So we're going we gonna to start right off with it. Uh, read that. It says, newsbreak.com. The U.S. Strategic Command just casually tweeted about nuclear war. Mm. Right, right, right. Casually tweeted about nuclear war. That's not something you casually tweet about. But right. in a uh, society where... Uh, the public is clueless. They're more worried about the next, uh, Cardi B video. Crazy. Right. You understand? You could do things like that and nobody will catch it nor will they care. Uh, read that. The U.S. Strategic Command has suggested its adversaries may consider nuclear use in a bizarre tweet released in the middle of Monday night. Poster statement preview. The, the agency prefaced the tweet which was issued just before midnight Eastern Standard Time. The spectrum of conflict today is neither linear nor predictable. We must account for the possibility of conflict leading to conditions which could very rapidly drive an adversary to consider nuclear use as their least bad option. I see that thing right there. The Bible is a true book. The Bible is a true book. What you got? The uh, Read the next article right next to it. What's that? Newsbreak.com. North Korea ready for combat. As Kim Jong Un orders missiles to be fired at any time amid fears of nuke, new nuke test. New nuke test. So you see, it's not just, uh, it's just not in the Korea. What is it? Russia. It's China. It's all of these, all yeah. of these different countries. They're getting ready. They're getting ready for the prophecies to come to pass. But our people, cap, our people so easily distracted that, you know, back in the days, Rome used to have to host big games. All they got to do is start a challenge right now, and our people will be di diverted just that easy. Right. Well, this right. is this is Rome all over again. You just said uh, host a big game. What you got? You got the football. You got uh, NBA. you got the arenas. You got um, boxing. Bo boxing. You got ESPN. Mm -hmm. All always going. Right. Always distracting our people. So yeah, it's the same thing all over again, like the officer said. Um. Give me Psalm 7 real quick. All right, so everybody's gearing up, getting ready for nuclear war. All right, let's see what the Bible has to say about that. Uh, Psalms chapter 7 and verse 13. Understand this. All of this is nothing but a, a big a big uh, show, okay? Understand that the Most High, he's the director, right? And he made He made all the other nations. Right. To be the the the, the actors, you understand? Right. We just happen to be the leading role because everything's about us. Oh, praise right. to the Father for that. Watch this. Psalms chapter seven and verse thirteen. Come on. He hath also prepared for him the instruments of death. He ordained his arrows against the persecutors. Right. So the Most High God, He made the oppressed and He made the oppressors. Right. And He actual and He also made instruments of death for those who persecute innocent people and the right. poor. All right, so he's setting the stage to do what? Unveil his weapons of war, okay? Right. Um, Give me that in uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 56. Give me that in Isaiah 56. All right, here we go. Read that. 54 and 16, excuse me, 54 and 16. The book of Isaiah, chapter 54 and verse 16. Come on. Behold, I have created the smith that bloweth the coals in the in fire. And that bringeth forth an instrument for his work. And I have created the waster to destroy. The waster to destroy. Right. That's going into um the plague. We went over that this morning. Um, Zechariah 14. Going into the plague. When it says to destroy, it's going to show you exactly the destruction it's, it's talking about. Nuclear destruction is the worst. Ask um 
uh, Euro, Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Right. They, it took them years to recover from that thing. Mm-hmm. Right. Okay. But also remember this, and we'll get it next. We'll get our revelations. Um, was it 18? One day. Uh-huh. Watch mm-hmm. this. Zechariah chapter 14 and verse 12. Come on. And this shall be the plague wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. That have fought against Jerusalem. Remember, this is that stage play, right? The Most High God is using the nations as his actors, and he's going to use them for his glory. He's going to pay them back for what they did to his chosen people. Read that again. And this shall be the plague Come on. wherewith the Lord will smite all the people that have fought against Jerusalem. Come on. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. There it is. Their flesh shall consume away while they stand upon their feet. So this Dang. is going into that uh, destruction that mm-hmm. we just read right. in Isaiah, right? You had something? All right, finish that up. And their eyes shall consume away in their holes. And their tongue shall consume away in their mouth. You see that thing right there? So that's that's what we're witnessing right now. It's World War Three on the brink. Right. Right? But what are we witnessing? They're talking about nuclear war. But we know according to the scriptures, this is going to come to pass. Right. All right? We got to understand this. We don't want to be no. We don't want to be wrong when this pops off. So we got to do everything in our powers as the Israelites, you so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native Americans, to prepare for the dangers to come. We're living in these last days. This is a reality. They may uh, tweet it casually like it's nothing, mm-hmm. but for us, we're like, oh, no, no, no. This is uh, this is the signs of the times. The right. scriptures say watch and pray for things like this. And yeah. what's crazy, that's what the pastor's supposed to be warning the people. Right, They're supposed to right, be giving right. them heads up like, hey, this is what the Bible says is going to happen at this time. Mm-hmm. The pastor's supposed to be a, a watchman. He's supposed to be warning the people to tell them to get right, tell them what it takes to be saved in the end time. But these pastors, instead of hollering, give 10%. Make sure you hit the offering table. If you bless God, he'll bless you 10 times over. These are the messages our people are getting while war is steady on the brink. Hey, officer, I, I'm glad you said that. When you when you said that this scripture came to mind, give me 2 Maccabees chapter 4. I want 15 and 16 because what our people have to realize, like the officer just brought out, is that these churches don't think that we set them up. We didn't set up these churches. Right. Christianity came from the same people who put us in slavery. Right. You understand? So it'll be hard. It's like Officer Elijah said, he said, um, these pastors, they're supposed to be warning us about this. It would be hard for them to warn us about those people because those are the ones that's paying them. Right. That's those right. are the ones who set them up and taught them what they know. Okay, watch this. Second Maccabees, chapter 4 and verse 14. 15. Verse 15. Not setting by the honors of their fathers. And that's the thing about it. The Christian church is not setting by the honors of our forefathers. Right. Our forefathers are Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. All right? From Jacob came the 12 tribes of Israel. This uh, society, this uh, place called America, Babylon the Great, this was established off of uh, pillaging, rape, rob, murder um, against the children of Israel. Right. right. All right? So understand this. Christianity has nothing to do with our forefathers. Read it again. Not setting by the uh, by the honors of their fathers, come on, but liking the glory of the Grecians best of all. Right, the glory of the Grecians, uh, Greco-Roman Empire, like uh, Officer mentioned earlier, and that's who America is today. Now watch this. Watch this. Verse sixteen. By reason whereof sore calamity came upon them. Come on, for they had them to be their enemies and avengers. See, that's the problem. The so-called black and Hispanic man, we look for the same people who are our enemies to be our avengers. Right. Too. Right. We look to them to save us out of the situation that they put us in. Mm. You understand? So it's impossible for the pastors to warn the people because they're looking for the white man, the same one who raped their mother, to save them. And they look into him and he has blonde hair and blue eyes and is holding out his hand and saying he's Jesus. Hey, save me from you. That's what it sounds That's like. That's exactly what they're saying. That's a Stockholm syndrome. Right, right. Let me let me get a script. Let me get a script. Give me uh Revelation chapter eighteen and four. Uh this is what our people need to consider thinking about all what's being brought out. So what should you do at this point? Hearing all these things going on, all these commotion of wars, this and this and that. If you are an Israelite, you should be at ease right now. That should tell you, let me get my popcorn, sit down and wait. But the only way you can you can think like that, your mind has to be separate to this world. Read that for me. Revelation chapter 18 and verse 4. 
And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sin. You see that God says, come out of her so you don't partake in destruction that's coming. So if you continue to be at ease in your uh, 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 basketball, football, all these entertainment that you have out there, uh, um, uh, politics, believe it or not, when destruction come, you're going to be a part of that destruction. Really. And that ye receive not of her plague. You hear that? So you don't receive part of her plague. That's exactly what uh, Cap just read in Isaiah 54. So what do you have to do? Repent. And come back to the Most High God. Hey, Officer Elijah mentioned something early about the church. Um, go to that next article. Watch this. Read that. This is WashingtonPost.com. Church membership in the U.S. has fallen below the majority for the first time in nearly Let's get the Most High round of applause. Oh, yes, right. That is a beautiful <laughs> thing. <right there. laughs> All right, read, read, read some of that. The proportion of Americans who consider themselves members of a church, synagogue, or mosque has dropped below 50%. According to a poll from Gallup released Monday, it is the first time that has happened since Gallup first asked the question in 1937, when church membership was 73%. Go ahead. In recent years, research data show has shown a seismic shift in the U.S. population away from religious institutions and toward general disaffiliation. Hold on, and, Cap. Think about this. He said when church membership was 73%, during that time you had the KKK. Right, you, during right. that time you had um, um, Jim Crow. You had all, all Jim Crow was about mm -hmm. to be formed. All of these things were going on during the time that the church membership was 73%. So that's telling you that ain't of God. Go ahead. A trend that analysis say could have major implications for politics, business, and how Americans group themselves. In 2020, 47% of Americans said they belong to a church, synagogue, or mosque. The polling firm also found that the number of people who said religion was very important to them has fallen to 48%, a new low point in the polling since 2000. Now watch this. Give me that in Isaiah 60. Um, understand this. The prophecy was that, uh, you know, in these end times, the morals of people would get worse and worse and worse. Don't get it twisted. These religions are man-made. Right. You understand? But they have some type of quote-unquote morals, right? Some type. Watch this. Isaiah 60 and 2. Isaiah chapter 60 and verse 2. Come on. 4. Behold, the darkness shall cover the earth. And gross darkness, the people. Right, that darkness is a representation of sin. Right. So it says the darkness, gross darkness shall cover the people, read. But the Lord shall arise upon them. and upon his Upon thee. Excuse me. But the Lord shall rise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. So that's one thing right there. That's why you see that percentage dropping. Now, on the other half, you also got to account. What they're not accounting for is the Israelites who are waking up. That's right. That's right. That's not accounting for that part. Give me that in Second Thessalonians two three. They try to hide it, and mm -hmm. guess what? Eventually, they can't hide it no more. Exactly. Exactly. Second Thessalonians chapter two and verse three. Come on. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. The falling away, seventy A.D. Come on. And that man of sin be revealed. There it is, because, you know, as we continue to live, we're starting to see the evils in the land. And we're starting to see who's behind the evils in the land. Right. Now watch this. Read verse 1. Verse 1. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Come on. And by our gathering together. By us doing what? By our gathering together. By us doing what? Gathering together. By us gathering together, we're doing what? We're leaving these churches. We're leaving That's the right. Christian church. We're leaving the mosque. We're, le we're leaving all of these places. That's, That's right. right. All right. So all of this is for that. That's a that's a breath of fresh air right there. Hey, give me Tesla real quick. Pull up that Tesla article or that video. Yeah, Tesla video. Pull that up for me. A video capturing what's left of a Tesla Model S after it slammed into a tree, killing the two men inside. The car's lithium-ion battery reigniting over and over again. Firefighters battling the flames for more than four hours using 30,000 gallons of water before the fire put itself out. 
So what do we see here? On that story, it was actually two people who lost their lives. Why? Um, because they trusted in a computer-operated vehicle. Meaning they weren't driving. They weren't steering the car. And then it gets in an accident, and everybody's like, I can't believe this happened. That, that just retarded. I'm sorry. Lawsuit. Yeah. Big lawsuit. Yeah. But at the end of the day, you know, um, not speak, you know, they're deceased and things like that. That's unfortunate. But, hey, at the end of the day, you got to use some common sense, right? Right. I mean, I, w- I know I'm not driving a vehicle that I can't control. Computers crash every day, B. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. He ain't lying about that. <laughs> iPhone, my iPhone's like, no, nah, no, nah, my iPhone was good. But, um, I've had phones, <laughs> I've had phones that's done that before. You understand? Yeah, they just bug yeah, out real fast. Like, yeah, man. I had computers do that to you, me. You know, that would remind me of that movie, um, iRobot. Uh, when there it is. He didn't yep. trust, he didn't trust on the, uh, robot to drive for one. Hell no, I drive myself. Exactly. But what is that? They predicted. They know what they're trying to do. Mm-hmm. But, uh, it's, they're not going to succeed. Before I get this in Obadiah, give me that in Job 5 and 12. All right. It's just showing you, you know, they're trying to get to that point. Most I ain't going to allow it. Right. That's the thing about it, man. He's showing them. It's like, all right. Y'all think, y'all think y'all are me. Y'all ain't me. Mm-hmm. That's because that's what they're trying to do. They're trying to play God. And play, trying to play God got two people uh, put to death. Read what you got. Job chapter 5 and verse 12. Come on. He disappointed the devices of the crafty so that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. You see that? So that their hands cannot perform their enterprise. Meaning what? Hey, they're trying. They're trying to do that. They're trying to replace human beings with robots. It's not going to happen. All right? Because you're going to have situations like that. And then give me that in Obadiah about their pride. Actually, uh, give me that in Ezekiel 28 and 2 first. Bring it up. Ezekiel chapter 28 and verse 2. Come on. Son of man, say unto the prince of Tyrus, thus saith the Lord God, because thine heart is lifted up, and thou hast said, I am a God. I sit in the seat of God. There you go. They're trying to play God. Come on. In the midst of the seas, yet thou art a man. Yet thou art a man. Come on. And not God. And not God. Because remember, who controls life and death? <laughs> The most high God control life and death. That's right. Okay, and he's showing you that Esau, hey, fall back. Fall back. You're not on my level. All right, come on. Though thou set thine heart as the heart of God, behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Right. The wiser than Daniel is going into the uh, technological advances. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, read that all the way through. Verse 4. With thy wisdom and with thine understanding, Thou hast gotten thee riches, and hast gotten gold and silver into thy treasures. That, what verse is that? Verse 4. No, I want 3. Verse 3. But behold, thou art wiser than Daniel. There is no secret that they can hide from thee. Now watch this. Go to Isaiah 47 and 8. All right, going into that type of mistake out of Esau. If he's all-knowing, if he's all-wise, why, why would you do something like that to put a human life in danger? Mm. This is why, because... When you are the, on top, it's it's human tendency to do what? To relax. Right. right. You understand? They, they got everybody believing that they are just so mighty, mighty, mighty and so um so smart. No, that's not the case. Watch this. Isaiah chapter 47 and verse 8. Watch this. Therefore, hear now this. Thou that art given to pleasures, that dwellest carelessly. That does what? That dwellest carelessly. You dwelling carelessly. You're careless in your acts. You're missing some things because of that pride. Now give me that in Obadiah 1 and 4. 1 and 4, yep. Obadiah, verse 4. Though that exalt thyself as the eagle, and though thou set thy nest among the stars, thence will I bring thee down, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. If thieves came to thee. Now jump up to, what is it, 3? Pride. Verse 3. The pride of thine heart hath deceived thee. Thou that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? There it is. There it is. That's the pride. All right. By them doing these type of acts, um, trying to show that they are, you know, further than everybody else on the earth. That's what happens because they get careless. They feel themselves a little too much. That's right. Uh, let me get a, a script uh, real quick to show uh, Esau's way. 
It's not going to last long. We need, we need to understand what God is saying. Give me second Ezra chapter uh, six, verse eight. Cause this is just a short time. They, this is their time. Let them enjoy it. Cause our time is coming. Right. Read that. Second Ezra chapter six and verse eight. And he said unto me from Abraham unto Isaac, uh-huh. when Jacob and Esau were born of him, Jacob's hand held first the heel of Esau. Jacob is the so-called blacks, Hispanics, and Native American, and Esau is the so-called white man. It says, Jacob, hold on to Esau's heel. Read. For Esau is the end of the world, and Jacob is the beginning of it that followeth. You see that? Esau is the end of this world. When this world comes to an end, our world will begin. So That's for right. those of you out there, embrace yourself. Learn God's laws. All right. Uh, Judges 5 and 11. <clears throat> yeah, Judges 5 and 11. Get that real fast. Judges chapter 5 and verse 11. Mm-hmm. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the place of drawing water. Right. So they say they are delivered from the nuclear bombs in the place that was in slavery. That's talking about us in America today and everywhere else we were scattered. Read it again. They that are delivered from the noise of archers in the places of drawing water. Read. There shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the Lord. Right. So before that, before these bombs hit our people, we got to wake up. These so-called blasts in the span. We got to start keeping God's commandments as we can live today. Right. All right. So yeah, we're going to cut to a quick commercial break. This is the Writings on the Wall radio show. Radio show. <laughs> We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road, purple and gold, from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone, 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth. 